The upstands are on. I'm really hoping that it's just the, <laughs> the remainder of the wet from the plaster and not. Oh! <laughs> oh! Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm back with another renovation vlog for you today. Today we are going to be focusing on some more work in the kitchen and also I thought I would do a bit of an upcycle on the piece of shelving that was left over from the kitchen units and also have an offcut from the kitchen worktops. I'm hoping will create kind of like a TV stand slash bench slash potentially little bed for the kittens to go into. We shall see. So that is my plan for today. It is a very gloomy day here in London today. We have howling winds outside, rain, grey clouds, but feeling quite cosy in here. I've got the lamp on behind me there. So yeah, we have the kitchen worktop fitter coming back today. He's going to be adding the upstands into the kitchen. So I was waiting for all of the plaster to dry before the upstands could be fitted. I'll just insert some footage so you can see how it's looking. So yeah, the upstands are kind of like a, almost like a skirting board or a baseboard, but they go around the side of the worktops to protect that first part of the wall. They're about this tall. I got them from Worktop Express as well as the worktops. They've actually maybe got a sale on at the moment. If you want to have a look, they, I think they've got some sales on over the Easter weekend and I'm looking at it thinking, yeah, I definitely didn't get that much discount. So it might be worth having a look if you're thinking about, or if you've seen like my previous videos, I've been thinking about buying some worktops for a kitchen refurb. Um, I'll link them in the description box for you if you want to have a little look. I feel like Easter weekend is quite a good time for sales, isn't it? So yeah, I might have a little browse myself, although I'm not sure if there's anything I particularly <laughs> need at the moment, so maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> also, I think Snug Sofa have a really good sale on at the moment, and I've always got my exclusive discount code as well. So if you click through using my link, you will get additional discount. So if you're in the market for a new sofa, they do deliver their sofas as quickly as in 24 hours. So you could have a new sofa by the end of next week. And yeah, I absolutely love my snug sofa that's up in the loft. So I will leave that one linked for you as well. So yeah, exciting day today. We're gonna have the upstands fitted and I'm gonna get cracking with my little upcycle, the perfect rainy day activity for today. I've also been celebrating. I've been out to buy some balloons from good old Card Factory. If you're having a party or a celebration, Card Factory do a really good range of balloons and helium balloons and they fill them up with helium included in the price. So it's a great place to get your balloons if you are celebrating something. And I am celebrating something over on Instagram because I've just reached 100,000 followers on my Instagram account. Can you believe it? We're nearly at 100,000 subscribers here. If you haven't subscribed already, it would absolutely make my day because when we hit 100,000 here on YouTube, I will get a YouTube play button. So you're actually given like a physical thing with the name of your channel on. It's kind of like a, I think it might even be made out of metal. So something that we could have in the background here, which would just be so amazing. But yeah, I am so delighted to have reached that milestone over on Instagram. And yeah, I've been posting over there for years. I started my blog, I'm sure some of you know this already, 10 years ago. And I think on Instagram, I think I started that maybe a year or two afterwards. And then, yeah, I've been posting over there ever since. If you want to give me a follow over there, and you're not already, it's Mr. Carrington. I also have my home account, which is Mr. Carrington Home. So I've had a fun morning with the kittens, taking some pictures and some footage for that. And the biggest thank you for being here and for supporting my channel, for supporting my Instagram. It really does mean the world to me. I've just had a delivery as well today. It's all go this morning, I tell you. So this has come from Neat, who are a fabulous company. I've shown you a Neat products before, and I know a lot of you are into your eco-friendly cleaning products, looking for kind of more sustainable ways to clean your home, and Neat do some fab stuff. So they've sent me over a few bits. First of all, we have this rather fetching tote bag, which is very, very nice. It says, 
you look neat. <laughs> I'm not sure I do today. And then we have, first of all, some dishwasher tablets. It says these are powerfully plant-based, vegan and cruelty-free, and also tough on grease. We also have, now this is new, and I'm very excited to try this. This is the foaming toilet cleaner. We've got the starter pack here. The scent is sage and mint. Again, it's plant-based, and I quite like foaming products because I feel like the foam sticks to where you spray it. Enough said. <laughs> and then we also have the floor cleaner, all purpose. I've used this before and it's in the scent mango and fig and I really like this scent. I love the smell of fig. I love the fig dip tea candle that you can get. So it'll be a pleasure to clean the floor with this. Again, it comes with the, they're little glass bottles basically. So you just put the glass bottle in and then you fill up the rest of the container with water in the containers are reusable. They sell these, I'll link the website, but they also sell these in the supermarket, so you might well see them in your nearest supermarket. And they've also sent these, which I've never seen before. These are eco rubber gloves, and also the eco sponge scourer. So these are by a company called Seep. And yeah, I haven't tried these out before, but I'm very intrigued to give these a go. This is kind of like that, you know that it's almost like a loofah kind of texture. So I'd imagine that's quite good for washing dishes and it's also not going to scratch anything if you're doing any um, things like non-stick pans it feels like it wouldn't be too scratchy on those and then these are made from sustainable fair trade rubber 100 percent plastic free and biodegradable let's have a little look do you feel like you're at the dentist <laughs> so yeah a massive thank you to neat for sending over these fabulous cleaning products i can't wait to try those out and yeah i will leave neat linked for you in the description box so you can go and have a look yourself if you haven't discovered them already right i'm gonna go and quickly whip around in the kitchen get everything ready for the kitchen fitter and then we'll get started on our little upcycle project and of course as i'm setting up the desk here to <laughs> start work on my upcycle these two have popped by just to ensure that everything is in its rightful place so just a reminder this is the top section of that shelving unit that I use the rest of in the kitchen under the counter. I flipped it upside down and then this piece here I found that was part of a table and chairs that was being thrown away. The table was all taken apart. The chairs, four of them are now with Luke. So you'll have to see on his channel how they turn out. He's gonna give them a little bit of a clean up. Oh, hello. <laughs> Mittens just wants to see what's going on here. So this potentially may become like a little bed for them in there. Then I thought the TV could go on top of it. I think there might be some cobwebs in amongst this, which is why Mittens is so enthusiastic to inspect it. Maybe some spiders for her to play with. But yeah, this fits so nicely that I thought if I cut some slots or drill some slots into the wood, this can drop down and become flush. And then I can use an off cut of the kitchen counter, the marble, to be the top of our TV bench or side bench, however we want to use it. So yeah, I'm just positioning this now. And that means as well that I can attach the backboards onto it. So what do we think, Mittens? As you can see, it's very tight. Maybe I'd take a little bit off them just so that they're not not quite so near to the edge because I feel like that might split the wood. So yeah, I might just take a centimetre off these before I um, cut the grooves out so that can drop down. Some of you suggested turning this over, but I feel like with it being upside down, the base creates a really nice, sorry, the top <laughs> creates a really nice base. What do you reckon, Mittens? <laughs> Zero interest in that. So yeah, I better get cracking. So now I've trimmed those down a bit, I'm just marking around them, I've positioned it in place, and I'm just going around where they're gonna sit with a biro, with pumpkin, just checking that everything's okay inside. I have had to keep an eye on those two while I was sawing, because they're quite curious, but the noise of the saw is not appealing to them, so they don't come close to it. And I'm just gonna measure how deep to make the slots. So yeah, as you can see, I have drawn just around them here with a biro to mark on where those slots are going to be. And then for the depth, I want all of this section to sit flat. So we need it to drop. I'm just using the, <laughs> the card that came with the neat, just as a little measure. That's how technical I am. Yeah, I can just use this little measure here as my depth. So I've drawn on the depth 
and I put some diagonal lines across because it just helps me, especially if I'm like a bit tired or busy day. Remember which bit I'm cutting out, so cutting out these bits and not that bit. So yeah, diagonal lines do help. What I've done is just sawed the lines at a diagonal, but obviously I can't get in to cut it all out. So what I've done is put some tape on the drill so that I know the depth of these slots that I'm cutting out, and I'm gonna just drill holes into the area that I want to remove, then it'll just be easy to chisel the last little bit away, he says. <laughs> This will fit and sit flat. Come on, <laughs> look at that. I mean, it's a bit messy, it's a little bit, yeah, messy, <laughs> but it's flat and it's strong, and you can't see the really rough chiseled holes that I made. So, what I'm going to do is screw this in just to make sure that it's nice and secure. So I've now tacked all these bits, but they're not going to be flapping around. And yeah, that's all nice and flat. I'm very happy with that. Just tested out the marble on the top. I couldn't resist, and somebody's already making themselves right at home in here. What do you think, pumpkin? Are we happy with that? There should be space for both of you in here. Not sure how they'll like it when it's on the floor, because they like to be high up. What do you think, pumpkin? Is that enough for today? I am gonna leave it there for today because the kitchen is now done. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour of how the kitchen is looking and then we will finish this off tomorrow. Okay, the upstands are on. I've just had to quickly put back the coffee machine and a couple of appliances just because, well, coffee and ravenous. <laughs> so, as you can see, they are on. They've had to go all the way to the edge here. That was kind of the best way to do it with um, when the previous worktop was removed. This wasn't meeting the um, countertop anyway. So, yeah, taking it all the way out and all the way around. Yeah, it's just fitted perfectly. And the chap that was fitting it said that, yeah, I think there was this much left, literally. Um, I've got the offcut somewhere. And yeah, I did kind of, well, I didn't want to buy an extra entire length of upstand because that's an additional £95. So yeah, we just squeezed it, <laughs> squeezed it in. Here you can see around the sink, fitted really nicely all the way to the edge here. It kind of really does make it feel quite wide and really nice. I've just dropped all the hand washing bits into the sink itself. This is just a drying pad. You can get these in Poundland and that was only two pounds and it's really big. And yeah, I still haven't bought the perfect draining rack to go there. So for the time being, this is just quite handy if I just wash up a couple of plates. I've had to, um, yeah, as I say, just plug in a couple of appliances because I do want to make some food. So yeah, there is still just a tiny bit drying out in here. It seems to be taking forever. This room doesn't have a radiator in it, so I've just been switching on the dehumidifier and it has been sucking the water out. Everywhere else is pretty much dry now, but this area here was where the most kind of work was done. It was where the kind of damp beam was removed and there was more kind of plaster put in to fill it. So I'm really hoping that it's just <laughs> the remainder of the wet from the plaster and not, let's not say the L word. I'm pretty sure it's not the L word because it would probably be coming in from kind of above and also, yeah, not in this kind of formation, touch wood. <laughs> so yeah, that is where we are with the kitchen. I am thinking walls still. Um, I've taken on board all your ideas and your thoughts. I think I'm leaning towards maybe actually 
boarding the entire thing and then maybe having a shelf all the way across that will meet the top of the boards i've seen that and it looks really nice and i think you can get the mdf like tongue and groove the paneling style boards really reasonably i think in wix they do them quite cheaply i think that would look lovely so yeah that's what i'm leaning towards as soon as this is dry i'm going to crack on and paint all the walls just with a wash, um, like a 50% water mix with kitchen paint, just white kitchen paint, just to kind of start to seal this off. And I think then, once it's kind of white, it will help me visualize better. While it's the plaster and then the gray concrete -y look, it's, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> so I think when I do that, I'll be able to just stand in here and really make those decisions as to what that wall finish is going to be. Oh! <laughs> The desk started moving. <laughs> My hip was pressing the desk and it started moving by itself there. Um, good morning. It is the next day. I have given this a good clean last night and also just been faffing a little bit, checking that the top fits okay, which it does, which I'm very happy about. So I'll show you how the wood's come up. It's come up really nicely. Um, yeah, I just used some floor wipes that I had knocking around, just some antibacterial floor wipes, and they just seem to have lifted the dirt off really well. And I've given the whole thing a bit of a clean up hoovered it out, wiped it all down so there's no grease or grime. I'm not going to sand it because I don't want to kind of affect the wood. I just want to wash it, I think. So yeah, I'm going to go for a rummage and find some paint and maybe just use some primer and maybe water it down a little bit and see how that looks. <laughs> we shall give that a go. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. It's a beautiful sunny day. So hopefully the light is a little bit better today. So yeah, I'll just show you how this has come up though. How about that? It was really little effort, but yeah, all the dirt just kind of lifted off with the floor wipes. So yeah, very happy with how that's looking. This isn't gonna be um, shown really. This is kind of gonna be underneath the top, but I just wanted to make sure it's nice and clean, get rid of all the cobwebs and the dirt on there. And yeah, so it's all ready for painting. I'll go and find some paint. Okay, so I have mixed my paint up, I've got a bit of paint in here and I've just added a little bit of water, maybe 30% water. Pumpkin wants to help, but pumpkin, I feel like, if you wouldn't mind, please, it's just cat fur and paint situation, thank you. <laughs> so he's off to the other table now, just join mittens in little box for some chill time. And I'm gonna get cracking. doing is just with a cloth I'm rubbing it before it dries quick dry paint so <laughs> you've got to work quite fast I'm just kind of rubbing it into the grain so I don't want it to be fully painted I want to see some of this wood through it still but um yeah I want to just take back that kind of yellowy tone of it Well, it's a little bit later on and the paint is dry so I just kept playing around with the wash if you feel like there's too much wood showing through you can just wash on some more of the paint and water mix if there's too much paint you can strip it back just using a wet rag so you can really just play around with it it's looking very white on camera but I feel like kind of in the daylight it's not as white so we'll see how this goes I'm probably gonna add a protective wax to it which might kind of knock it back a little bit darker as well and maybe bring the grain out a bit more. So I've got some furniture wax from Rust-Oleum, so I might try that and just kind of buff it on, which will also give a protective layer. It says it protects, enhances, um, use over Rust-Oleum furniture paint. So yeah, I mean, I'm using it over undercoat, but it seems to be all right. And this is making it a tiny bit darker, as you can see. It's bringing that grain through and it's turning the wood this really lovely, it's almost like a pinky color and it's going to add some protection as well. So I'm just going on quite liberally, just with a bit of kitchen paper, or you could use a bit of old rag or t-shirt. 
And so, yeah, I'm just going to rub this in over the entire thing. I think that's bringing the grain out, yeah, really nicely. So, I'm very happy with how it's looking. So all that remains is for me to add this offcut of worktop that was from the kitchen. As you can see, I've added some of these sticky floor protectors. These are just little bits of cork. You can get a pack of these. I bought mine in Sam's Pound, <laughs> where everything's like 99p, but they sell them in a lot of the bargain stores too. And yeah, I thought the cork would be quite nice. So this just sits in a couple of positions at the back and also at the front in these corners here. And it just ensures that it's not gonna slip around when it's in place. So I'm gonna place this on the top now, lining it up with my little cork squares so I can see exactly where it should sit. That's all nice and straight. Okay, there we go. So I think on my next renovation update, I'll update you with this in position once it's all styled up and you'll be able to see how it's looking in place. But I am really happy with this. And I feel like once it's on the floor and you're looking kind of down onto it, where the marble becomes kind of like the focus and then you have this kind of beautiful washed wood underneath, I think that is gonna look fabulous. So I shall keep you posted as to where this ends up being positioned. I think it will work quite nicely underneath the window in here. So I think I'm gonna wrap the vlog up here. I really hope you've enjoyed this little renovation update. I hope you've liked seeing how the kitchen is progressing. So the next steps in there will be adding whatever it is onto those walls. So I'll get those whitewashed and then make some decisions on that. I will keep you posted how the, oh my goodness, I'm just looking across at it now and it's looking so good. I'll have to style it up and show you in the next renovation update. I'm also going to share a Instagram reel and maybe a TikTok as well of the process too. So um, I will style it up in that. So do follow me over my Instagram, which is Mr. Carrington. And yeah, I'm wishing you a very happy Easter if you are celebrating Easter today. So yeah, that's it for this one. Do subscribe if you haven't done so already. We have just hit 94,000 subscribers here and I would love to make it to a hundred thousand so yeah do subscribe if you haven't done so already it means that you will never miss a video and you can comment and also it means that you can use the watch later function which is really handy it's free to subscribe by the way and yeah I really like that function because if there's a video that you haven't got time for you can add it to your watch later and it can also keep track of videos that you've watched if you want to refer back to them as well because I know sometimes I've had comments where people have watched one of my videos and then they can't find it and there's something in it that they want to refer back to. So yeah, do click that red subscribe button if you would like to, and also give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one, if it gave you some inspiration, and let me know in the comments if you're doing anything around your home, I would love to hear how you're getting on. I know some of you are doing renovations and projects around the home, so I always love to hear all about those. But yeah, whatever time it is that you're watching this video, I hope you're having a lovely day or evening. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon. Bye.